In Jerusalem, my government has maintained the policies of every single Israeli government since 1967, including those led by Golda Meir, Menachem Begin, and Yitzhak Rabin. Today, nearly a quarter of a million Jews, that's almost half the city's Jewish population, live in neighborhoods that are just beyond the 1949 armistice lines. All these neighborhoods are within five minutes from the Knesset. They are an integral and inextricable part of modern Jerusalem. Everyone knows, everyone, Americans, Europeans, Israelis certainly, Palestinians, everyone knows that these neighborhoods will be part of Israel in any peace settlement. And therefore, building in them in no way precludes the possibility of a two-state solution. And I want to say one more thing about our policies in Jerusalem. You know, nothing is, nothing is rarer in the Middle East than tolerance for the belief of others. But it's only been under Israeli sovereignty in Jerusalem that religious freedom for all faiths has been guaranteed. And we shall continue to guarantee that religious freedom for everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, while we cherish our homeland, we also recognize that Palestinians live there as well. We don't want to govern them. We don't want to rule them. We want them as our neighbors, living freely in security, dignity, and peace. Yet Israel is unjustly accused of not wanting peace with the Palestinians. Nothing could be further from the truth. My government has consistently shown its commitment to peace in both word and deed. From day one, we called, I called, on the Palestinian Authority to begin peace negotiations without delay. And I make that same call today. President Abbas, come and negotiate peace. You know, that, that's so elementary and so obvious. You'd think we don't have to say it because leaders who truly want peace should be able to sit face to face with each other and negotiate the peace. You can't successfully end a negotiation for peace if you don't begin it. So I call on the Palestinian leadership, come and negotiate peace. Of course, the United States can help the parties resolve their problems, but it cannot solve the problems for the parties. Peace cannot be imposed from the outside. It can only come through direct negotiations in which we develop mutual trust, that mutual trust that is necessary to forge a common future. Last year, I spoke of a vision of peace in which a demilitarized Palestinian state recognizes the Jewish state. Just as the Palestinians expect Israel to recognize a Palestinian state, we expect the Palestinians to recognize the Jewish state. My government has removed hundreds of roadblocks, barriers, earth ramps, checkpoints, and this has facilitated tremendous Palestinian movement. And as a result, 
we have helped spur actually an incredible, incredible boom given today's world economy, an incredible boom in the Palestinian economy. You have coffee shops, restaurants, businesses, shopping malls, even multiplex studios. Just go to Ramallah and Janine. And that's not come about out of sheer air. We have made it possible. You cannot do this if you cannot move trucks, goods, people, customers. That's been our policy. And we added to that an unprecedented moratorium on new Israeli construction in Judea and Samaria. This is what my government has done for peace. Now I ask you, what has the Palestinian Authority done for peace? Well, you can judge for yourself. They placed preconditions on peace talks, waged a relentless international campaign to undermine Israel's legitimacy, and promoted the notorious Goldstone Report that falsely accuses Israel of war crimes. In fact, they're doing that right now at the UN, well, at the grotesquely named UN Human Rights Commission. And I want to use this opportunity to thank President Obama and the Congress of the United States for their efforts to thwart this libel. And I ask for the continued effort this week to fight this lie. Regrettably, the Palestinian Authority has also continued the unabated incitement against Israel in their state-controlled media, in their schools, and other institutions that come directly under their control, and some others, too. A few days ago, in a public square near Ramallah, the Palestinians named this square after a terrorist who murdered 38 innocent Israeli civilians, including 13 children, including an American citizen, the photographer Gail Rubin. They named a public square after this murder, and the Palestinian Authority did nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Peace requires reciprocity. It cannot be a one-way street in which Israel makes all the concessions and the Palestinian Authority makes none. That's got to change. Israel stands ready to make the compromises necessary for peace. But we expect the Palestinians to compromise as well to do their part. But there's one thing I'll never compromise on, and that one thing is Israel's security.